Hey everybody, welcome to this new video. So, before starting, I swear that the idea of this video was right in my mind, but then I see weird shit like this one, <laughs> or this one, and I cannot help myself, but uh, I don't know. Or take a look at this rally. I mean, this guy is rallying us with Zenobia and Constantine. <laughs> okay, back to serious, <laughs> or at least I try. With the amount of material that comes to my attention, like this one, I should maybe think of making a top 10 fail competition for Rise of Kingdoms. Uh, I don't know, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, do you see this fortress burning? It took us two freaking days! And if you want to know what are the best rally and defense combination for Rise of Kingdoms, at least for the upcoming KVK, please stick around and watch this video until the end. As always, leave a like and subscribe to the channel not to miss out to any future content. Hey everybody, welcome to Week Gaming and today I'm going to talk about the best garrison and rally combinations for Rise of Kingdoms. KVK unleashed in many kingdoms, battles have begun and ended, plenty of troops have died, and what does this mean? Well, first that Lilith will get some extra money, but also that we have a lot of material to discuss about. I have selected for you some reports that I think are significative and representative of what we usually see in KVKs. Of course, please keep in mind that results are extremely fluctuating. The very same combination may have a super positive result or a very negative one. This is because it depends on too many factors. Kingdom Age, so the commanders that you have available, the equipment that both the rally and garrison leader are using, the KVK technology, but most important, the amount of reinforcements and the length of the battles. See, um, KVK is very far away from a perfect testing scenario. You always have people reinforcing with wrong troops, getting killed by the AoE and much more, but I've selected here some reports that have been somehow consistent throughout the kingdoms and the wars that have been fought. So, let's start with Guan Yu. I've always said that for me the very best pair for Guan is Leonidas. No question about it. For example, take a look at this. Both of the players, of course, have max stack. We are talking about top tier players. Ticklefish has something like 400 plus million powers. Lodi has 250 million power. And Guan Yu Leonidas wins against Zenobia Theodora. And on average, our reports look more or less the same. Of course, the report was sometimes a bit better, sometimes a bit worse, depending on the amount of reinforcements but it was consistent, and even if sometimes we had some more troops dying, the power loss for the enemy was more, because we were reinforcing constantly with T4. Guan Yu Harald is also very good, not always, but in the right conditions can win big. Take a look at this report on the side, I mean the power difference, the power loss difference between the two sides is huge. Guan Yu Harald works also very good, if the enemy is not using Zenobia as a primary, you can look at this report, Theodora, Wu Zetian secondary, and Guan Yu Harald is winning big. Surprisingly decent reports for Alex and Harald, I've seen many reports being actually decent, so you should definitely check it out. I also want to say that uh, it's not a very good idea if you want to defend against Guan with commanders that you normally use against Attila Takeda, for example Artemisia Wu Zetian or Artemisia Theodora, look at this report. Something else that I strongly suggest not to do is to eat a rally where the rally leader is using a Guan and this Guan is properly equipped. Take a look at Doctor Strange's equipment, for example. So, overall, I will rate the combination Guan Yu Leonidas with a, an A, Guan Yu and Harold with an A, and any combination with Alex and Harold or Guan Yu and Alex, I will give that a B. Going on with cavalry, Attila C represents, after so long, the most popular choice for rallying. This for two reasons. Infantry is mainly used for garrisoning, so using infantry for rallying as well would be problematic. Second, it's extremely painful to swarm, especially with the new Heroic Anthem KVK technology, so the only way to force the enemy to cancel an Attila rally is by launching a proper counter-rally and making sure to reinforce it constantly. 
I mean, Attila is still a pain in the butt, let's be honest. Even though we proved in another video, card up on the top if you want to watch it, that the skill damage is more powerful compared to the normal attack damage in terms of wounded units, the normal attack damage, differently from the skill damage, happens every single turn. So in a long run, especially in KVK, where everyone reinforces the rally, the result is devastating. But not against Zenobia. Attila always loses against a Zenobia that is more or less there on the equipment standpoint. So if two big players face each other and both the Zenobia in the garrison and the Attila in the rally are properly equipped and the structure is equally reinforced, you are never going to take the pass. Mark my words. And you are going to have a painful bill against Zenobia in terms of their troops. On the contrary, if the enemy is defending without Zenobia, then it's going to be very painful for them. As you can see from the report that I've been scrolling on the screen for a while now, where the defenders, yes, I counted it, please leave a like, took almost 89 million casualties between dead and saves. And the attackers only, let's say only, 51 million, with a difference of approximately 38 million. So, as of today, I will still rate Attila and Takeda with a score fluctuating between A+, and A-, according to the enemy defense, and Attila Chandragupta with a score of A-, just because you're not going to deal as much counter damage to the counter rallies that are eating you compared to Attila Takeda. So, let's finally go over to the archers. I have to say that in this meta, especially against Zenobia, the archers work surprisingly good especially any pair with Nebuchadnezzar and Ramses. We use here Ramses primary because we prefer the attack tree, which we consider it to be better. And uh, I have to say that all of our reports look more or less the same or all positive. So it's a good trade. You, you need to vary sometimes the rally that you're using to attack the enemy. Otherwise, you are going to die always with the same troop type. Nebu with Thamiris work also decently. You see here a huge report, but this only in the case the flag or the structure is not reinforced. This because Thamiris with her poison is gonna inflict a lot of damage to the enemy very fast. And when the difference between the troop count becomes larger and larger, then the enemy is going to take way more casualties than you. Our final archer combo to take into consideration is Nebu and YSG which is very good on a damage standpoint, but it's not going to withstand the counter rallies as good as Ramses does, because I remember Ramses having the skill damage reduction. So on to the final ratings. In my opinion, Nebu and Ramses, or Ramses and Nebu, it's an A+, Nebu and Tomiris it's a B, and Nebu and YSG a B+. As concerned the garrison, overall, whoever you pair Zenobia with, she's a total B. But it's a B for beast, or something else if you want. I mean, she's really tough to deal with. My favorite pairing is Zenobia plus YSS for multiple reasons that I've already said more than once. You're always going to have somebody putting the wrong troops in your pass, flag, or fortress, but at least you're going to get the boost from YSS expertise skill. Not only, the rallies in KVK are very, very long, and the effect of the commanders trigger basing on the health bar of the garrison leader, and I will prove this point in another video. So, after one minute you can be sure that the health bar of the captain is going to drop below 50%, and YSS is going to get another boost in defense and damage from his third skill. So for me Zenobia YSS is an S, which is the maximum rating that I'm going to give to a commander. Zenobia Theodora will be an S-, minus while Zenobia Vuzetia is an A+, useful especially against archers due to the fact that she has a solid skill damage reduction boost. Guys, here we are at the end of this video. If you agree with me, if you don't agree with me, please leave a comment in the comment section down below. I would love to hear your opinions about it. And if you enjoy my content, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel not to miss out to any future content. As always, I will see you on the next one. Ciao!